Station. Welcome back. We're talking viruses and illnesses again. And when it feels like we've mostly moved on from COVID-19 as a society as a whole, we still need to be vigilant about staying healthy. You may have seen headlines about a mysterious illness, but it has a name, uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. And health officials have noticed outbreaks in China, Denmark, Norway, Ohio, and Massachusetts. But is this illness really mysterious? Should we be concerned about it? Well, joining us now is Dr. Paul Anthony, Assistant Director of Infectious Disease with Hartford Hospital. Dr. Anthony, first of all, thanks for joining us. Uh, can you tell us what mycoplasma pneumonia is, first of all? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, mycoplasma pneumonia is a bacterial infection that sometimes tend to follow uh, virus infections that someone may have had, or sometimes can just happen in people without the preceding viral infection. And as you said earlier, it causes uh, what we call a walking pneumonia. And what's, doctor, what's the difference between walking pneumonia and regular pneumonia? Yeah, so the, we use the term walking pneumonia because it tends to be milder than the other form of pneumonia that we see where folks may be a lot sicker. Okay, so I got to talk um, some f from some personal experience here. We had a case of pneumonia in my household. Uh, we were told by our nurse practitioner that they've actually seen an uptick in pneumonia this year coming through the clinic. So has that been the case of what you've seen this year? Yeah, I, I, I think like, you know, a lot of it is coming back to what we would call pre-pandemic level. Things are going, coming back up as, you know, all the precautions that we, we were taking for the last three years are coming down. So uh, in a sense, like, it's not surprising. Okay. Is this something that uh, you can be vaccinated for, doctor? Unfortunately not, not for mycoplasma, not yet. So when you're tracking illnesses, at what point do you say, okay, this is an outbreak and we are seeing a significant cluster of cases and you and you kind of try to get some health officials' attention? Yeah, so, so the, the first thing is, uh, I, in Connecticut, uh, at least mycoplasma is not necessarily reportable, but we, so for any diseases, what we do is you look at we know a little bit about how much we should be seeing of that disease at a certain point of time. Mm -hmm. And then if you see anything that's outside of the norm, that's when like you start to be alarmed. But okay. And is there, I mean, is there anything that we can do just in our daily lives to, you know, protect ourselves or reduce the risk of catching it? Yeah, so it, it goes back to all the things we've been doing in the past, which is like, you know, washing your hands uh, periodically so that your hands don't throw out the vector to bring uh, bacteria, in this case, uh, to you. The other part is uh, masking, good old masking when, when possible, especially indoors if you're with a lot of people that you're not sure. The other one is for folks who are sick, stay home if possible, so that way you don't contaminate borders. It's, it's really that. And then like, because the mycoplasma tend to go over what I call fertile ground of someone who's already had a viral illness before, mm -hmm. it's really trying to not catch those viruses. Okay, yeah, speaking from personal experience, if you have that cough, <laughs> go get it checked out, right? I guess, yeah. moral of the story, that's what we learned. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Anthony, we appreciate it. My pleasure.